Africa Prime, brought to you by Jamison Select Reserve. Welcome back to Africa Prime. Zama Mkos is still with me. She's the CEO of the National Film and Video Federation. And before we went into break, we're talking about the kind of uh, interest there is in the South African film industry. Is there a market for this, do you think? I think the market is hungry. The market is there. The market is waiting for local content. You know how exciting it is to to see your own story yes. on big screen. Sure. Uh, I mean, it's something that perhaps you know Americans are, are used to, but the rest of us, you know, we would be excited because there is not enough of our own stories and ourselves on the big screen. So the market is there. Once again, the challenge is those platforms through which that the product is going to be distributed. So I think that is the challenge. But the market for me, I think, is there. One of South Africa's most um, best performing films is Shax Shabalala's Guide to AC. It <laughs> grossed about 38 million rand at the box office. That was huge. Wow. It is, uh, it, it is huge. Yes. And, 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 and that in itself, though, is, is, is fantastic, but it is not necessarily a reflection of the rest of the South African local content, yes. um, which, which is unfortunate. But once again, I think there are lessons that can be learned about, about producing content for your particular audience. Leon Schuster does that fantastically. Exactly. You know, he connects that. with his audience and, and, and he, he writes and, and produces something that he knows that his audience is going to respond to. And that is the challenge, you know, that we are throwing into the, into the creators and the writers and the directors out there. We're saying, let's make films that people are going to want to come out and watch. And when they do, it resonates with them. So it's important to not make films for ourselves, but make films for the audiences that we expect to take their time and pay their money to go and watch. All right, this past weekend in Johannesburg, I went to watch uh, the premiere of Madagascar 3. I know it's for kids, let's uh, not go there. <laughs> and the point is, it was packed. Everybody was out to just see what this is about. Do you think South Africa can have that same interest if it was a local film? I think we can. Yes, because but. especially if it's animation, yes, because animation is just one of those um, genres that actually can travel. It's one of those genres that unite people across, whether it's race or culture yes. or, or anything. So I think if we can get to create something that is uniquely South African yes. and then people can identify with, mm -hmm. people are going to flock in those cinemas. Because particularly, I mean, animation, it really is, is one of the focus areas that I personally am very keen to develop. And humor you know, is great. Yes. Humor, the animation, it, it, it also travels a lot. It's going to open up audiences for us even internationally and the income streams that you can get from animation as yes. well go beyond i mean look at all you know all the characters of madagascar you find them in windscreens you find them in exactly. toys the merchandising the income is, screen, is a whole you know, different is, is fantastic yeah all right so maybe if we combine humor and animation maybe a trevor noah movie uh, something of the sort trevor noah <laughs> hopping around and maybe <laughs> bumping his head yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I will con collect royalties if this <laughs> happens from you and Trevor Noah. <laughs> In the meantime, are there some sort of uh, skills development? You have, so for instance, co-production mm. treaties with the different countries, yes. Germany being one of the big mm. ones. What mm. are these all about? Um, co-production treaties actually are basically about opening up the market for, for, our, for our product. Opening up the market, but also what it does is that it uses uh, the, 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 the incentives that are available from both countries. Yes. So as, as you say, you mentioned in, in Germany, we've got actually co-production treaties with eight countries. So with those eight countries, you'll find that if the producers from the two countries partner, what can happen is that they can access, you know, an incentive, which currently, you know, from our side is administered by the DTI. Yes. And from that country, they can access that incentive. So you'll find that the cost actually of producing is not as high for the individual producer. But what it also does, it suddenly it opens up an audience for you in Ireland. Yes. Recently in, in, in Cannes Film Festival, we signed a co-production treaty with Ireland. So now you know what, all of a sudden, our content will find an audience in Ireland because there's going to be that partnership yes. and there's going to come up with a production that resonates with, with both countries and the two audiences. And speaking of calm, I, calm rather, I saw a, a news article that says lights, camera, but no action, in the sense that there's 20 films presented there, but none of which were screened. 
Well, they were yeah, none of which were selected to be part of, yes. of, of, of the festival. But you know, we always say for the, it's it's great if, if our films are selected for the festival and yes. we've had films before that have been selected. But for us it's more important to make sure that the networking, you know, uh, happens around those films. We make sure that as, as the National Film and Foundation, we hosted uh, a sales event, you know, there for those 20 films yes. that we sell and we pitch. And, and, and I can tell you more than half of those of, of those production came back with fantastic leads. And I'm sure, you know, there will be sales that come out of that. More importantly, yes. it's the business around Cannes that happens rather than the screening. Okay, but there's only about 20 to 30 films made every year. Mm. How can you grow, you know, how are you trying to grow this? We're trying to grow that and that is also going to be the critical point to yes. feed into the audience because the audience is there but we need to be producing enough content in order to feed them. We can't just pr only produce one a month, yes. for instance, because that's not enough to compete with, with the rest of the, of the you know, foreign content that gets flooded into the market. And, and I think there are a couple of um, incentives, you know, from our side. Yes. We're particularly looking, I mean, this year we, we, we you know, in my turn, we've come up with, um, with the women's slate. We're yes. going to come up with set aside, you know, certain funding that our, uh, our council has approved, funding that's going to be targeting specifically films made by women filmmakers. So we are focusing on, 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 on that side of the industry because our mandate is really to, to grow the industry you know, and make sure that previously disadvantaged groups are the ones that actually produce more of those films. Right. So we've put aside money to make sure that we fund women filmmakers and we're doing the same as well for the youth. We're going to be funding first time filmmakers, you know, who are young, young in a, you know, in a broad sense, yes. uh, but uh, but we'll, we've put money aside to make sure that we give an opportunity to young filmmakers to make films. Are some of those incentives like awards fine? Not every South African or African film, for that matter, is going to win an Oscar award. But if there's recognition locally, whether through award ceremonies yes. or some other things, it's, it encourages other upcoming it, filmmakers. It really does, and that's why for us the the SAFTAs, the South African Film and Television Awards, are our great pride and joy, and that is something that. We are very excited about and we want to make sure that we protect and make sure that it grows from strength to strength. We're in the process now planning for the, it's going to be in the seventh year, yes. in March 2013, that's coming up. And we are already involved in plans on making sure that it's bigger, you know, than it's ever been before. Because it's quite critical. Recognition is important for an industry. All right, on the personal side of things, you've uh, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. I come from Kenya and I never climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Why is that yeah, so much interesting? I, I, met, I met quite a lot of people <laughs> when I was there. They said, oh, no, they've never bothered. And it's and right there. <laughs> yes. and, and it's right there. I think for us, it was, um, I climbed it with my husband. I think it was something that came off the whim that we were like, why not? We like traveling and yes. we've traveled all over the world, but we've never actually, you know, explored what our own continent has to offer. Sure. And, and there was no greater place than to, uh, to start than right at the top. So off we went. And then there was the New York Marathon. And then there was the New York Marathon. Clearly, we, you know, we're very prone to adventure. Yes. I personally, we, we love adventure. And therefore, we felt that, you know what, there are other things that we could do to celebrate. Uh, in fact, it was our 10th wedding anniversary. Right. And we felt, you know what, what greater way to celebrate than to actually stretch ourselves and stretch our boundaries and see if we can run for 42 kilometers. And you know what, five and a half hours later, we came out alive on the other end. I am. Uh, I I don't know what to say because <laughs> I come a, from a country of great runners, and I've not done the Nairobi Between, marathon. Yeah, so let's not even any go marathon there. Any whatsoever. marathon whatsoever. At all. <laughs> I should be ashamed. <laughs> what What drives you to do all this sort of fascinating um, things? I think what drives me is to do something different. To to not be content with with simply being. You know, if yes. if there are things that you can do that are just extraordinary, you'll be surprised at actually. The fact that you can do that, the, you know, so for me, the word can't, yes. I, I always go out of my way to find ways to dispel the myth that there are certain things that I cannot do. In between, do you get time for family because you seem to have a <laughs> ridiculously busy lifestyle? <laughs> and it's exactly uh, that family that keeps me busy because what I've decided to do that all these adventures and all of these Things, new th new things that we explore, we yes. do them as a family. I'm a mother of two boys, and right. I can tell you, even today, they have cycled. They are currently training for for a triathlon and to and to swim the mid mile. Yes. We, we're getting them into the adventure so that we all 
we all do things as a family. A very athletic family. How do you manage <laughs> that whole cliched work-life balance? Um, it's, it's, I've be, I think I've best been able to manage it by not really chasing it, yes. but just believing that, you know, I do, first and foremost, I do what I'm passionate about. Like, development for me is, I'm very passionate about that. The film industry is something that excites me. Yes. So when I'm, when I'm working on the film industry and the development of the industry, it almost, it doesn't feel like work. I know that also sounds very cliche, but, but it is true. What are the work that I'm doing, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. And every day, so Sunday afternoon is not a dread for me. I look forward to Monday mornings. Ah, excellent. We sh you, should, you should bottle that sort of feeling and sell it. Um, <laughs> it, would, it, it would be a big <laughs> hit. <laughs> ah, don't worry, I'm working on it. I'm working Again, on I will it. claim royalties for <laughs> that. Finally, what, what is in the vision? What is the future for you? What are you still um, left to do? What I still have to do is I probably... Uh, personally, I've got. Uh, I still have to to run the 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 wall, the Great Wall of China marathon. That's going to happen as soon as I get the film industry on the road, yes. where they understand. You know, all of us understand that. You know what? We need to be creative, but at the same time, we need to to make sure that we run uh, sustainable businesses. And that, for me, is something that I'm very excited that we're on the road to doing exactly that. Yes, and professionally for the NFVF? For the NFVF, we, we are doing amazing things. I mean, people are going to get to know more about us that perhaps before they didn't even know who NFVF was and what they do. Right. But I think over the next couple of months, they'll be hearing more from us. All right, many thanks for such a fascinating chat. Thank you so much. It's been most yes. interesting. Zaman <laughs> Mkosi, C of the N National Film and Video Federation, speaking to us about life and film in South Africa and how to grow the industry and indeed how to run the New York Marathon. <laughs> I'm Larry Medewa. Thanks for watching.